It's always a great privilege to stand before the people of God. Amen. And each and every day I begin to appreciate our daddy the more and more for God giving him to us. Amen. And for him counting me worthy to be able to bring the word to us on this day in this second service. I don't take it for granted. Amen. Amen. I don't take it for granted for three reasons. The first one is that I will give account to God for every word that we utter here today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Secondly, the destinies of men and women are shaped by what happens in church. Amen? And I don't want to have God ask me, why did I not impact someone's destiny positively? Praise the name of the Lord. And thirdly, whenever I stand here to minister, I'm representing God. And that is not something that I take for granted. So stretch your, hand, stretch forth your hand and pray for me that Lord use your servant. Use your servant to be a blessing to me today. Thank you Lord. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, when the spirit of God is at work, can you do something about this mic? The mid is too high. Just reduce the mid a bit. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. During the first service, um, it was as if the servant of God took my message and preached it. Praise the Lord. We didn't talk to one another. He talked about us staying connected to the grace of God. Praise the Lord. And the choir literally preached the message also, talking about grace. His grace has brought us this far. Amen. Amen. And that tells me that God actually is the one that gave me this message. Praise the name of the Lord. And this morning I'll be talking about abiding grace. Can you say that with me? Grace. Say it again. Say it like you mean it. Amen. Amen. Chief Osha, how many minutes have I got so I can time myself? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. As a believer, one of the things that I always ask God for is to give me understanding. Praise the Lord. And therefore, this morning, I want us to understand grace a little bit. So, what is grace? Amen? Amen? What is grace? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What is grace? So, when we talk about staying connected to God's grace, when we talk about God's abiding grace, what exactly are we talking about? Amen. 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 The common definition is God's unmerited favor. Is it not so? But what exactly does that mean? God's unmerited favor. What exactly does that mean? Amen. I looked at the dictionary and there are several dictionary meanings to the word grace. And I'll just read the first three. Amen. The first one that you use grace as a noun is simple elegance or refinement of movement. Something graceful. Amen. Simple elegance or refinement of movement. And they gave an example here that she moved through the water with effortless grace. Talking about a swimmer. She swam from point A to point B effortlessly. Praise the name of the Lord. The second dictionary definition here is courteous goodwill. Amen. And then the third one in Christian beliefs, 
The free and unmerited favor of God as manifested in the salvation of sinners and the bestowals of blessings. Amen. Grace. And Paul made a very bold statement in our Bible reading, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10. He said that by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. Let's put all of this together. Amen? Let's put it together. In other words, God's unmerited favor granted him effortless ability to do the things he did. Do you agree with me? The first dictionary definition of grace is when something happens effortlessly. Is it not? Elegance, fluid, no struggles. God's unmerited favor. Amen? And Paul said that I am what I am by the grace of God, which was bestowed upon me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We all quote the grace whenever service ends, is it not? Amen. We all quote the grace. Second Corinthians 13, verse 14. If you could just flash that, my brother. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to read this scripture differently. Praise the Lord. Because when Paul said this statement, he mentioned three things. The grace, the love of God, the communion, the fellowship of the Holy Ghost. These three things are to be with us. But today we are dwelling on grace. So Paul wrote, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. What exactly is Paul saying? By the grace of God, I am who I am. That is what he said. And he's asking that that grace be with you all. Amen. Amen. That grace be with you all. God bestowed upon Paul an ability to do great wonders. Of all the apostles, the twelve, he single-handedly wrote three quarter of the New Testament. Grace. Praise the Lord. When Paul made this statement, it was not a prayer. Amen? Because if you look at the scripture, the verse before it, amen, you will see that he was not praying. He said, finally, verse 11 of 2 Corinthians 13. Finally, brethren, farewell, be perfect, be of good conduct. He wasn't praying. He was telling them something. Amen? He was greeting them. Say, finally, brethren, I have written all of these things. But finally, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. The God of love and the God of peace shall be with you. And in verse 12, he said, greet one another with a holy kiss. And then he ended in verse 14 by saying, the grace of God be with you all. It's not a prayer. It's a statement. A prophetic statement by the Apostle Paul himself that the grace of God that is upon me, I leave it with you. Praise the name of the Lord. What does grace enable you to do? Amen? We all have goals. We all have things we are pursuing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Every human being on earth is looking for one thing or the other. Amen? Amen? What is it that we enable you to accomplish that thing? Grace. Praise the Lord. You cannot achieve anything on earth 
as a believer, as a Christian, without grace. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> but the question is, do we as Christians walk in the consciousness of this? Are you conscious of the grace of God that is upon your life? Amen. 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 Growing up as a little boy in the village, I didn't grow in the city. Amen. 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 Eh? God looks for people in the village and bring them to the city. Sure you know. Sure you know. Where was David where God found him? In the backside of the desert. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I prophesy to you that wherever you are now, that you consider a backside of the desert, may God locate you and by grace take you to that place that he wants you to be in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Men and brethren. Grace. I used to play, you know, we would take Bonvita can, right? We would use tin cutter, open it up, put a tire tube on it, and be playing drums. Amen. 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 Growing up as a young boy, I could make beats and patterns that my mates could not make. Amen? 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 And then I remember when we did Children's Day, that should be 1982. Praise the Lord. I heard the sound of the drum set for the very first time. I could not get close, but what I heard was so good that I made up my mind that whenever I have the opportunity, I will learn how to play that drum. Say grace. grace. Say grace. grace. I didn't have the opportunity at, until I was in year one in Uniben. Say grace. grace. By the time I was in year three in Uniben, I was given an award as the most outstanding drummer in Uniben. <laughs> Say grace. How did that happen? I recognized the gift of God. I recognized what God has given to me and I utilized it. Praise the name of the Lord. I looked for the opportunity. And as soon as the opportunity emerged, I took advantage of it. Amen? Amara, bless my heart this morning. God bless you. Clap for her. Celebrate her. She's the Lauren Diago of Nigeria. And God will take you there. But His grace. If Amara is not aware and she is rehearsing, she is practicing, she is praying, will she do what she did today? If she is not conscious of it, will she be able to minister and bless the people of God? Grace. Until you are conscious of that which God has given to you, you can never take full advantage of it. I will say that again. Until you are conscious and you rehearse and you improve upon that which God has given to you, it will remain dormant. And that is why when Paul said, by the grace of God, I am who I am. Go back to that verse. You will see where he said that I labored more than them all. Yet not I, but the grace of God. What is it that God has given to you? Amen? What is it that God has given to you? Look at it. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, 
but the grace of God which was with me. Today, that grace that God has released upon you, let it manifest to its fullest manifestation in the name of Jesus. Stand up on your feet and declare it. Father, I will not take your grace in vain. I will not take your grace in vain. The grace that you have given to me, is it to write books? Is it to be of help to people? Is it to minister in songs? Is it to play the keyboard? Is it to play the drums? The grace for evangelism that you have given to me. Lord, I will not take it in vain. Lord, give me the grace to labor more than them all. Pray that prayer. Thank you, ancient of days. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. This is our month of grace. Take your seat, people of God. The Lord, by the mouth of his servant, our daddy, has declared this month as the month of grace. What does that really mean? Amen? Last month was the month of speed. Amen? And in my life, I saw things that I never believed I would see. God gave me speed. Praise the Lord. And I'm sure he did for you too. And this is our month of grace. And what this tells me is that God has released an unusual grace upon each and every one of us. A grace that was not there before. Amen? Amen? As God's people, the additional, the newness of grace, for lack of a better word, that God has released, it will take us far in Jesus' name. The question is this. This special grace that God has received, how can I be a partaker of it? Amen. Let's look at John chapter 1, verse 15 to verse 18. And we will see something amazing in that scripture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, may grace locate you. Turn to the other neighbor to your left, to your right, and say, may grace locate you. Amen. Amen. In John chapter 1, verse 15, John bore witness of him, saying of Jesus, and cried, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. The next verse. We will run quickly. And of his fullness have all we receive and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace came by Jesus. Amen. Go back to verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace came by Jesus. Amen. Verse 18. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is of the, in the bosom of the Father, had declared him. Praise the Lord. There are several dimensions of grace. Amen. There are several dimensions of grace, but there is a foundation. And that foundation is Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's look at Titus chapter 3 verse, verse 14 to verse 18. We receive grace for salvation. You don't do anything to receive that first foundation. Praise the Lord. Again, the, 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 the um, Titus, um, Paul was addressing his people here and said, let us also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses that they be not unfruitful. The next verse. And all are with me. Salute thee. Are you sure we are in the right place? Praise the name of the Lord. Go to chapter 2. I think I didn't write it down very well. Yes. Chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. 
verse 14. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let me confirm it here before we go further. Praise the Lord. Yes, verse 11. Second Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Thank you. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodly, ungodliness and worldly loss, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. You didn't do anything before that grace appeared to you, did you? Did you? Praise the Lord. Answer me, church. It's only the pastors that I hear their voices. Did you do anything before the grace of salvation appeared to you? God, by himself, decided to open our eyes to receive of that grace. And you being in church today is a testament that you have received that grace. So I want you to celebrate yourself. Mm. It's like some people don't believe that they should celebrate. I say celebrate yourself. <laughs> if only you know there are about 7 billion people on earth. We are going to 8 billion now. Amen? And less than 2 billion have received the salvation, the grace for salvation. You are special. Tell yourself I'm special. God has special interest in me. Amen. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 down, we will see it again. How God just selected us and opened our eyes to have that grace. Saying that, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Amen. Even when we were dead in sin, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. By grace. Praise the Lord. Even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together. There is nobody here that will say he was not a sinner. I was the chief of them all. But by grace, he reached out and he saved me. Amen. And we will see in verse, in verse 8 and verse 9, where he said that, By grace are you saved, if you could go to that scripture. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Not of works, lest any man should boast. God reached out and poured out that grace for us, which is the foundation. Amen. But the scriptures ask a question. Shall we continue in grace that sin may abound? God forbid. Salvation of our soul is the foundation that we must build upon for more grace. Praise the Lord. Remember that there are multi dimensions of grace. <laughs> I will not dwell into the multi dimensions of grace, but to just let us realize that the foundation is salvation. Because grace for mankind came through Jesus. Praise the Lord. As long as you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have laid a very solid foundation. For the other dimensions of grace to manifest in your life. Amen. 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 So the question is, what can I do to walk in greater dimensions of grace? How can I enjoy abiding grace? Praise the name of the Lord. I will dwell on only three. Amen. Amen. Men and brethren, I will tell us this. Unless you have a sure foundation for your faith, unless you have a sure foundation for what you believe in, you can't go far in life. Praise the Lord. An understanding of grace is so crucial that in every service, at the end of every service, 
what we have all agreed and abide and, 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 and continue to practice as Christians is that the last thing we tell ourselves is that the grace of God remain and abide with us. Grace is crucial. Praise the Lord. And my prayer is that may we understand grace greater than we've ever done after this service in the name of Jesus. Romans chapter 4 verse 16. Amen. How can I enjoy abiding grace? How? Everybody help me read the first sentence. One, two, go. Therefore, that it might be by grace. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. After the foundation of grace has been laid in salvation, you need faith to move ahead to other dimensions of grace. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. You want the promises of God? You need faith. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells me that it was the grace of God that came upon Sarah that even her dead womb came alive. Grace. The Bible said that if you must come to God, you must first believe that he is true of us. All of us here are believers. We believe in God. That is why we are here. But you need to add to that belief a little bit of grace. That unmerited favor, that elegance, that smoothness, that effortlessness, you need to tap into the heavenlies to receive it. Lift up your hand and say, Father, I receive grace for all my endeavors. I receive grace. I receive grace. I don't know the area of God you need grace right now, area of your life you need grace. Just lift up your hands and pray and ask God for grace. It could be in your marriage, in your business, in your profession, in your career, in your music. Just ask God for that grace. I reach out by faith today, oh God. And I receive grace from you. Lapando robon sombredeye. Ikotola zanen dobrado soto leve. Mane unto brado soto leve ne se tene into tabrana satalaba. Lord, I receive the grace, oh God, in my business. I receive grace, oh God, in my marriage. I receive grace in my parental parental responsibilities. I receive grace in my finances, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Ashen of Days. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. You need grace. Amen? Amen? If we read this scripture further in Romans chapter 4, you'll be amazed at the power of grace. Amen. 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 The Lord grant us understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. For you to get grace, you need to also ask for it. That is why I'm asking us to pray. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 4. One of the things that struck me about this scripture many years ago is that how come God arranged it that Romans chapter 4 verse 16 and, Romans, uh, and Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 are talking about the same thing. Romans 4 16 talked about you need faith to receive grace. Hebrews 4 16 said that let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. God not to make mistake. Four sixteen, four sixteen. It's not a coincidence. Let us therefore come boldly 
before the throne of grace. Verse 14 of Romans of Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. When you are going to the throne of grace, what are you going there to do? To seek for help. To ask. What are you asking for? That we may find grace to help in time of need. Hey, Nigeria needs grace right now. Because you look to the left, you look to the right. We need grace. And the only place we can find it is the throne of grace. Lift up your hands and pray for Nigeria. Father, we lift up Nigeria before your hands. Oh, Father, we come before the throne of grace. And we ask, Lord, for a fresh dose of grace upon Nigeria. Take our country to that place that you have desired for us, oh God. We need your grace in this country. We need your grace. We have come as your body to ask for grace for Nigeria. That unmerited favor, that elegance, that effortlessness, that sin, that, 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 what, that, that effortlessness to cause Nigeria to transition to the next, next administration. Seamlessly, Lord, we ask for that grace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lastly, and this is my favorite, Amen. Because this one, I have full control. Praise the Lord. If I want to enjoy abiding grace, I need knowledge. Praise the Lord. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2. It's my favorite. Because I believe I am the one that determines what I want to read. What I do not want to read. I determine what knowledge I want, what knowledge I don't want. True or false? True or false, church? I decide for myself whether I want to go on Facebook, on WhatsApp, or whatever. My phone will not automatically register me for WhatsApp. True? I determine which page to surf or not to surf on the web. True. You get grace through knowledge. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2 said, Grace be multiplied unto you. Pardon me that I'm taking out the peace, amen? Because my focus is grace. Grace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. And of Jesus our Lord. Praise the Lord. What knowledge of God do you have? The more knowledge of God you have in an area, the more the grace of God will manifest in that area of your life. And I have full control of it. I'm the one that decides to open the Bible and read. I'm the one that will look for Kenneth E. Higgins' book and buy and read. I'm the one that will go online and acquire knowledge. I'm the one that will go online and listen to music. I choose the music to listen to. It's a choice. When you know that you acquire grace through knowledge, you will be careful of what you read. You'll be careful of what you listen to. You'll be careful of who you associate with. You'll be careful of the things that influences your knowledge base. You take that decision. But though, what do I see most believers do? I hear that it's Buga that is raining now. She? Buga? I don't know. Now, so I hear. Eh? Praise the Lord. It's a dance step, Abby. It's what? It's a dance step. Uh huh. Praise the Lord. Uh, and everybody is bugaring. <laughs> Amen. If you, if you dance, and I don't know how you look like. Oh, because I choose not to know. 
Yesterday, my wife was saying something. He said, that, how come the songs that were raining, all of a sudden, they just die? And that is how it is. Buga has come, Buga will go. Praise the Lord. Uh, how did they call this one that time? I can't remember the name. Shaku Shaku. When Shaku Shaku come, everybody was Shaku Shaku in. He don't come, he don't go. Praise the Lord. Now, I, now Buga now in the rain, now, he go go. Eh? I remember in our days, in those days, when I shuffled the rain, true of us, old schoolers, you remember now? Eh? How has that improved your life? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Romans chapter 4, verse 16. I read it when I was in secondary school. When I was in the university, I, I still read it. Today, I'm still reading it. And my life is better. It is my choice. Buga de Suito, for those of whom I wear the enjoyment. Amen? The Bible said that the flesh profited nothing. Amen. Choose. Thank you. I'll round up. Choose what to listen to. Choose the knowledge you want to acquire. Because grace comes through knowledge. Amen. Amen. That's why you see a medical doctor will perform surgery effortlessly. How? Knowledge. You see an engineer will repair a car effortlessly. Knowledge. Amen? You will take that same car to another engineer that do not have knowledge. He goes struggle. Yeah? I will not go to those stories. Praise the Lord. Knowledge. What knowledge are you seeking after? To improve your life? Or a knowledge that tomorrow you will say, hey, I used to do Bugao. Stand up on your feet. Malendo brado sonto katalaba do soto levede. Nento kabo shikapra na satalaba. Malezoto into brodo soto le ne into kabado soto leve. The foundation for grace is salvation. I don't want to take it for granted that everyone here has received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. If you have not consciously given your life to Christ, this is the moment for you. So that you lay that foundation that will enable you to enjoy the multiple dimensions of grace that God has given given to us as Christians. Everybody, all eyes closed, all heads bowed down. Lebrekoto soto labada shantale into brado. You are here, you are not giving your life to Christ. Can you raise your hand? You need to enjoy these dimensions of grace. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. There is a special grace in the house. Malendo brado soto labada. Father, we thank you. Everyone, you say with me, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. I give my life to you. And I lay a foundation for grace in my life. In Jesus' name we have prayed.